sometimes we're all like frozen for for a period of time but i'm sure some of you have experienced that what i want to start with that the participants i really respect all of you coming into my presentations um i would like for you to uh, just share who you are your name and what your title is before i present is that okay So Kathy, you can start. All right. Um, hi, everybody. I'm Kathy Wolf James. I am a teacher support specialist for curriculum and instruction. Um, I'm here for you and to be a tech today. Thank you. Okay, I'm Liz Torres. Um, I've been working with Bernard to get him invited and a part of this summit, and we're super excited to have you. Thank you, Bernard, for being here. I'm also a teacher support um, in the area of social studies. Thank you. Hi, Bernard. I'm Heather Summers. I am a teacher support specialist for middle school science. Excellent. Hi, Bernard. My name is Anna Kay, and I'm a behavior support specialist. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Jeannie Toole. I'm a teacher support specialist in mathematics. Nice. Thank you. Hi, I'm Molly Keys. I work with Anna Kay. We're as another behavior support specialist. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Taylor Mayer. I'm a teacher support specialist alongside Liz for social studies, and we're so excited to be working with you guys. Appreciate it. Hi, my name's Lynn Wilson. I'm at Grant Middle School. I'm a teacher there, so I'm a te teacher leader facilitator. Thank you. I'm Deborah Blea. I teach second grade at Chamisa, and I'm the teacher leader facilitator at Chamisa. Thank you. I'm Dawn Lewis, and I'm at Adobe Acres, and I am the teacher lead facilitator at Adobe Acres. Thank you. Uh, good morning. I'm Moises Padilla. I'm the TLF at George I. Sanchez. Thank you. I'm Deidre Salas. I am the dean of students at Wilson Middle School. Thank you. I am Eric DeSanto. I am the high school science teacher support specialist for the district. Thank you. Good morning. My name is uh, Sam Mendes, and I'm the TLF at Washington Middle School. Thank you. I'm Veronica Lopez, and I'm the TLF at Jimmy Carter, one of the TLFs at Jimmy Carter. Thank you. Good morning. I'm uh, Michael Mendoza. I'm a dean of students and TLF one of the four TLFs at Delorty High School. Thank you. Hi, I'm Melissa Mao. I am one of six TLFs at Volcano Vista High School. Thank you. My name is Trisha Gunley. I teach first grade at Zuni at Elementary and I'm a TLF at Zuni. Yeah, that's a good name, Zuni. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Good morning. Uh, I'm Chris Welsh. I'm a Dean of Students at Del Norte High School and also a, a TLF. Good morning, Mr. Chimoni. Good morning, Mr. Welsh. Good to see you again. Thank you. Uh, good morning. My name is Rebecca Knowles. I am a, a testing coordinator at West Mesa High School and one of six TLFs. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Karen Webb and I'm Senior Director of Secondary Learning uh, with um, Curriculum and Instruction, CNI. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, I'm Amy Chase and I'm the Elementary Science Support Specialist for the district. Thank you. Good morning, I'm Gina Zabo, I'm Dean of Students at Mitchell Elementary and helping out our TLF. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Linda Torres. I'm the principal at Reginald Chavez Elementary School and I'm also supporting my TLF. Thank you. And I'm the Re Reginald Chavez TLF. Sorry, I've got a little lag. Um, nice to meet you guys. Thank you. 
I'm Tony Morris, and I'm the professional development resource teacher at EG Ross. Thank you. Good morning. I'm the other CLF at Adobe Acres. I teach second grade. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Annette Meyer. I am the PD resource teacher and TLF at um, Thrust Falconis Community Collaborative School. Thank you. Hi, I'm Alicia Marler. I am a TLF at Truman Middle School. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Darlene Pilon. I am a TLF um, SAT chair and testing coordinator at Ernie Powell Middle School. Thank you. Keshi Kotton, Alan de Waka, Bernard Chimani, Ho Shiwi, Ho Gagali Kotan, Ho Shaki Doka, Alan Chatle, Ho Alo Keg, and Zinawa, and the look at Zinawa Snak, Awil Equanigata, Ho Shiwi, Mayanik, as Benawe, you head to Nikla, Ho da look at Aho eat dead Zinawa Snak, Yanik, and like Awil Equanik. Let not look at Hun, quite of Yam Desa Magaonik, or not look at Hun. TLF, Lich Alo Keg and Honda Yanikina. A pleasant good morning. I am Bernard Chimani from the Pueblo of Zuni. I represent the Deer Clan and a child of the Eagle Clan. I am an educator with the Albuquerque Public School Districts. I'm a regular certified teacher. I'm also a culture and language teacher specifically teaching uh, our language from the Pueblo of Zuni, which is part of the 19 groups of New Mexico Puebloan people. We are a distinct uh, community because our language is a language isolate as linguistics have studied. And there are words that we borrowed from each other, but there are no other groups within New Mexico that we can communicate with, except with our PowerPoint. You all know what the PowerPoint is? You guys stole it from us. The PowerPoint is this one. If you have native students, they probably go like that, like that to show directions. So that's part of the culture of the PowerPoint. So we'll give credit to the uh, Pueblo and people because we point with our lips a lot. And so when I was in out in East taking my studies for my, my master's in ed leadership, they noticed that I, I, I moved my head a lot and, and they were like, are you having twitch problems or something? I said, no, that's just a part of our culture. So New Mexico has diverse cultures and languages and so forth, but it's good to see all of you this morning and, and you know, talk about uh, grace and patience. Here's an example of what we don't do enough with our students, just to listen to each other and be patient because our students right now, all of us are in a, in, in a predicament in this pandemic affecting all of us in so many different ways emotionally. And uh, some of us are stuck at home. I think most of us all are stuck at home or some of you are, looks like you're in classrooms this morning. But all this stuff that we're experiencing and we know that it's challenging. I wasn't prepared when I was told, I was actually, I, I, I just saw Mr. Wells join us I was at Del Norte, I believe it's March, I want to say 11th or 12th. It was during the state basketball tournament. One of my students came flying in and said, Mr. Jamie, guess what? They just canceled the Native American big powwow event. I said, why? What's happening? They don't have enough money? Or no, you haven't heard about the COVID? My mom just texted me. And he was all like, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. So he finally slowed down and told me about it. And so, sure enough, we got on. On, on the internet and started seeing the effects of the COVID and you know, the rest of the story. So that day, I just remember, I think my classroom is still set up that way unless they move my boxes around because they were gonna put me in a different classroom to teach my Zuni language. But throughout these experiences, I really just sorted out all this stuff. I mean, we have emails coming at us bombarding us sometimes I, I i don't catch up enough and and some event or meeting has gone by but grace and patience 
is seen through the different ethics of the paradigms that all of you have been probably trained in or we need to brush up on. There's basically four in education. And the two that I'm really going to focus on and share with you are the ethics of the profession and really just honing in on the ethics of care. And why should we care? I mean, we're, we're stuck in our homes getting paid. We can go get a cup of coffee. And right now I'm wearing my summer shorts. You can't see it, but I'm wearing my nice shirt and, and bolo tie. No, I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm wearing my everyday teaching clothes. But grace and patience is embedded within us. And sometimes we forget that we are human beings, that we do get stressed out that we have responsibilities, we have our own children. Maybe some of you have children right now that are online, trying to get online, whether it's elementary, middle school, or high school. Uh, some of your students may be at on E Academy. I have some of those students in my Zuni language program. And so it's, it's stressful, really stressful. So yesterday, I think it was even more stressful because we know of the voting that's still going on but we won't get into politics. And so with that, I'm going to share my screen with you and just share the, the indigenous knowledge embedded infused with Western, Western theory. And when you combine that together, you become a very educated person. As I mentioned um, briefly, I'll mention that I'm a graduate of University of New Mexico. I have a bachelor's of science degree in education and further my education, I have a master's degree in education from the University of Mexico. I also have a master's in ed leadership from the Pennsylvania State University. And so with that, I've been a principal. Um, some people ask me, why, why aren't you leading the schools in your native communities as, as we're referenced, living on the reservation? I said, there's a need in our, in, in our indigenous communities of the shift in our um, native languages, home languages, specifically Zuni. My master's paper when I was preparing to be a principal was how do principals support bilingualism, bilingual education, because that's that's a need within our New Mexico schools. So to prepare myself for that, I really took a look at the ethics of care, ethics of the profession, ethics of critique, ethic of justice, and I felt like um, those things didn't weren't playing out here in New Mexico. So I stepped out of uh, leadership for a while, uh, stepped out of principalship because I care enough to say, hey, if we don't do something about our language, it will surely die out. And that's called the death of a language. But let's continue uh, to share. And I, I do want to thank you as a Native person that you allow me to, to give, give my wisdom to you because in history, if you take a look at history, and I won't spend too much on that, but we were told historically, Indian problem. You're an Indian problem. Let's put you in a reservation. Let's, let's put you in a boarding school. And, and during my studies, I went to go visit one of the first boarding schools that they rounded up our native children and took them 1,750 miles to a place called Carlisle, Pennsylvania. And I was able to go take a look at what this place was all about because I read about the boarding schools. I'm a product of the boarding schools and I'm proud of it. So education tried to defeat us. There's three thoughts of school that tried to defeat the Native Americans, law, education, and land. But as I mentioned, we won't get into politics. I'm not a politician, but I do advocate for education and I share my experiences and knowledge with my APS colleagues and others. But let me turn my screen on here and present to you now my knowledge. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
So the presentation I entitled Grace and Patience, Applying the Ethic of Care Lens, because we have different paradigms that we're thinking through as educators, educational leaders, those of you that might have much more uh, years of experience, by no means do I know everything about educational leadership. I'm all, always researching, reading, and collaborating with professional teachers just like you. And right now we're doing a lot of uh, leadership teaching, decision-making in distance learning. Uh, just a quick reminder that we have um, our spiritual walk Native American lecture series. And I was one of the first presenters uh, the other night, uh, Monday evening with my colleague, Kevin Otholi. Well, we know that the ethos word is a Greek origin. It's talking about how Aristotle as a philosopher started taking a look at how humans behave and the choices that they make. So it's a, it was a balance between passion and caution. But fast forward to where you and I are living, the 21st century, it's how we do our practices and the things we value that make us unique from one person to another, organizations, school districts, and of course, society. I feel like right now it's so bifurcated, so divided, and, and you know the rest of the stories. Are we really wanting to teach our young people, the future leaders of today, if we don't teach them the correct way, the ethical way, a democratic society will completely break down. So I started taking a look at what was happening throughout the summer with CNN and I finally shut it off. But we know that ethics is, is a part of us and it's required in education. Some people might simply say, well, that's good versus bad. It's a system of moral principles. Uh, you choose what you feel like uh, you've experienced, and sometimes it's not always in education in the best interest of our students specifically. Again, I'm representing my Native uh, Indigenous students and other teachers and past policies, educational policies from the government to state from NMPED have not always been in the best interest of our Native students. So you might question, well, why ethics? Well, that defines you and me and as a whole group, and it takes us into our community, our leaders, even our families. Specifically looking at schools, we, we know that we're led by administrators, teachers, staff, and I'm, I'm talking about ancillary, ancillary, however you pronounce it. It's, it's, it's including the custodians, the bus drivers, the cooks, anybody that is interacting with students because they're at the they're at the core of education um you need to have at least a basis of understanding uh how you're going to make your decisions are they grounded in theory or are you just deciding at a, at a drop of a hat that, that that's that's the best way that you can I know that we're sometimes put into ethical dilemmas where we just don't uh have time especially principles, to make a quick decision. And I'll admit it, as a principal, I had to say, I don't have the answer right now. Give me grace and patience, and, and I will share grace and patience back with you. And uh, the theories that I will now share with you are also embedded with our Native American values with our APS, Indian Education Department, these are embedded in our daily lessons and our resource teachers are strategically placed throughout the Albuquerque Public Schools where we have a high number of our native uh, population, kindergarten all the way to high school. I wish we had more resource teachers, but you know how funding goes. But this is what I teach daily and, 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 and share. It's, it's an acronym, BIGM. And they start calling me, hey, Chief Big M. I said, that's fine. You can call me whatever you want, but respect me. So embedded with our Native American values are belonging and independence, generosity, and, of course, mastery so that we can see all our students graduate and having shared with them our ethics and how we support our students. So basically, in my studies in education, I learned that there's uh, four ways of thinking as we are classroom teachers, educational leaders, superintendents, 
uh, you can take a look at each one critically through your own lenses, but the two that I will really take a look at are the, the compassion-oriented values called the ethic of care. It's people over principles, not the school principles, but the other principles. So I was very fortunate to have studied with Dr. Stefkovic at Penn State, and this is a, an excellent diagrammatic uh, example of how sometimes if you take a look at the middle part, depending on where we're coming from, depending on how we were, we were prepared or weren't prepared, um, sometimes our codes clash and then we have to make professional judgments. So this is all actively taking place in front of our eyes, in our schools, in our classrooms, in our communities, and in the public schools that we work in. This one called the ethic of care really focuses on the compassion. It's a concern for others, making sure that there's connectedness and respect. Sometimes we're quick to, and I call them the three C's, which is, completely opposite from the ethic of care. It's so easy to do the three C's, but what are the three C's? The three C's are condemn, criticize, and complain. You can choose to come from that paradigm every day. Oh, the wind is so bad. That's Then you set your whole agenda, your whole emotions based on that. And there's the other threes, which I'm sharing with you right now, compassion, concern for others, connectedness, and respect. And keeping those positive relationship within our schools and creating partnerships because you've heard the famous quote, no, no person is an island. And sometimes teachers feel like, and sometimes I do, we have a lot of teacher autonomy. And, and there were years that I taught out of a portable classroom uh, none of my colleagues came by, and uh, life was, like, lonely. Sometimes teaching can be lonely. Leadership, especially principalship, is a, is a very lonely uh, uh, career. But we know that we have to continue those positive relationships among all our colleagues, among our staff. And I'll share with you, I, I, I really like the way the principal at uh, Del Norte High School sent out a letter telling the teachers, hey, slow down, take it easy. We'll do our best. And, and the teachers have really come through. There's a lot of camaraderie that had a, uh, a students uh, were given an opportunity to have a, uh, I think like a bake, bake off where students were able to bake cakes based on a theme, I believe, and they had awards, rewards for them, also for the, um, the teachers. I also want to share with you, I call this Bravo, Bravo, Brava, building relationships with actions that value others. That's where the acronym comes. So you may question these personally for yourselves. Am I, are my actions empowering? Are my actions supportive? Are they respectful? Am I challenging the imagination? Right now we, <laughs> boy, can we use a lot of imagination? What's the best strategy? And I don't think there's one true solid only way to present virtually to our students. Are my actions upholding high standards? Are they courageous? And boy, are we the teachers of this time in this period in the 21st century. We all have to be courageous. You've got to want to support one another instead of the three negative C's that I spoke earlier about condemning, criticizing, and complaining. Not the time to do that. The next thing, so do a lot of Bravo. Uh, recognize things that are positive within your students, even families. Uh, reward them accordingly. Don't discipline them. Don't throw the book of ethics of justice at them and critique them. Well, your student only comes on. Well, you don't know a family situation. So find out where those students are coming from. Are they a homeless family where the children are living in a van, maybe in a in a shelter? We don't know until you find out and 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 uh, make your uh, connections. 
So what's the role of school administrators and teachers? Again, these are not an exhaustive list of my knowledge. I'm sure if you have other ways that you do this, I would love to sit down and have a discussion, discourse and dialogue and come up with other ways that we can uh, best fit the role of being a principal, administrator, superintendent, teachers. I know all of you are doing a very excellent job of meeting individual student needs because academics should not be the complete focus. Socially, emotionally, some of our students are being isolated. I have extended family that live near Louisiana and Zuni and they don't have the best internet system and believe it or not, my auntie who's in her 70s is the guardian and, and she's the one checking in with her grandchildren. Should that be happening? It's part of our native uh, way of thinking to support one another, no matter where we are, no matter, no matter where we live. And here again is to continue developing positive relationships. And I really like this word of empowering, which is the opposite completely of disempowering. John, I only saw you once in uh, Google Meet or whatever platform you're using. Uh, you're behind on your work. Well, again, make that connection. Why is that? Why is, what's, what are the reasons that John is behind in school? And by golly, do we know some of the challenges of remote learning because I'm there in it with you. I, I feel like a sense of isolation we're not meeting face to face anymore, though electronically, yeah, it's a little bit different. We start to feel like we're the only ones, the students, teachers, and the staff. And boy, do I love going to sporting events, basketball, football, cross country, track, because I used to be a coach as well and empower the young people, boys and girls that I coached. And so I, just, I am missing sports. Yeah, there's NFL, but I'm not much into NFL. I'd rather support the children that are in sports right now. But because of the COVID-19, we don't want them to, uh, to be affected by it. So we know that there's challenge in, in assessing our student learning as a teacher and also as a native language teacher. That, that uh, became one of my challenges because I rather would just see face to face and in some cases i would because of our oral assessment not to say it's impossible through uh the platforms that we use uh google meet or the other one um face to face is a lot better so we have to go th and develop other ways of assessing student learning maybe it's through a project-based learning and give them an extended period of time where the students are able to demonstrate, let's say, even baking a cake. And along with that, so if I'm expecting my students to learn Zuni language, I would uh, support them, I would scaffold them, I would do as much as I can, give them the vocabulary, but have them maybe do a short video and now taken over and um, I would assess them with a rubric on that. <laughs> we know about technical problems. Right now, I'm looking over to my right of my shoulder on, on, on the desk next to me in my, in, my, uh, in my home classroom, in my home, is the APS hotspot. Some days, I'll see that little signal drop from, or from three to one, and, and then I freeze. My students freeze when I'm teaching. And I think uh, the other thing is also, how do we keep students engaged? Sometimes I see my high school students dozing off and so I have to take a, a little break or do some breathing exercises and uh, give just like we would give them a, give them a recess in elementary you know there's nothing wrong with telling your high school student hey take five minutes go take a quick brisk walk around your home depending on the situation or go get a glass of water and then we'll come back so these are one of the challenges. Again, I, I put some because, of course, I'm not, I'm not listing everything that we're uh, being challenged by at this time. And I, I came across this. One of my colleagues sent this to me, and I, I, I was kind of like, I'm not making fun of the COVID-19, but I think we have to have some native humor because that's, that's my culture. We do a lot of joking and teasing, as I mentioned with you, the PowerPoint that we, we invented. 
So can you imagine if tomorrow the schools opened, especially with the mask situation? Um, apparently, this, this is a substitute teacher that doesn't know how to do the Google Meets or Zoom, and she doesn't have, uh, maybe I'm assuming, positing that uh, lesson plans were left behind. There's no smart board. Well, there's a smart board with the, the basic numbers in the back, but Take a look at that little guy in the corner hiding from the teacher. And oh my goodness, I, I, I just see chaos in this classroom. Can you imagine having a walkthrough and observation in a situation like this? This would be uh, something else. And I think about our Native American students. So sometimes our grandmothers, grandfathers are the guardians. They're the ones that are teaching the culture, the language. And so I call that grandma school. Grandma has her own curriculum as well. And uh, grandma's curriculum helped me to learn my language of Zuni and grandfather's as well. And she's really applying the ethic of care and saying, son, remember, don't touch your face. And the little guy goes, what face, grandma? <laughs> and then I put in my, in my, in my site uh, notation here, I wrote in my language, is the way it looks. And Hota means your maternal grandmother. Wowo means your paternal grandmother. So we have two words, very descriptive, who you're talking about. So he goes, Hota, Wowo, Kwap, Oversized mask covering his whole face. At least they're practicing, you know, the ethic of care and one of the things to keep COVID from spreading. And I have to give full credit to Ricardo Cate. He's from, I believe, from Kiwa, Pueblo of Santo Domingo. He's a Native American Puebloan cartoonist and say, technology. So you've got two brothers, my brothers, maybe my younger brothers saying, hey, lift me up on my shoulders. Maybe, maybe we'll get a better signal so we can go do our online schooling. Can you hear me now? And we know that hotspots were put in buses, but strategically doesn't go all the way out to western part of uh, Bernalillo. Uh, I'm talking about Tohajali, native, uh, native uh, community, where most of the Navajos uh, are living out there with their students. And when I didn't, when my hotspot wasn't working, I know that my smartphone told me you're losing data or your data, you got to upload more money, da, da, da. And we hear about shared Chromebooks within extended families, laptops that may be old or maybe not working, home computers, et cetera, et cetera. You've been there. Well, take a look at some, and again, not exhaustive of all the strategies that you may be trying, but one of the things I think is a simple and easy way is just to do a social emotional check-in with a thumbs up. How's it going, Bob? Either you get a thumbs up or maybe the other one, two thumbs down. And so that should clue us as teachers and administrators to maybe do a, a visit through phone or text or uh, email to their parents and maybe we get a constant thumbs down where we say hey let's uh check in with the counselors psychologists if need be is this a situation where i'm using the ethic of justice or the ethic of uh care do i care enough or is that student just a number in my classroom so those are the things that that, that i feel like we should really be um using more of in our strategies. Do an academic check-in. Again, I earlier I mentioned that it should not be expecting everybody's GPA to be 4.0 and more, because that's not the focus of our teaching right now. We're taking a look at how well, what's the wellness of our students, of each other, and by means we, 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 we should be empowering each other as colleagues, giving each other uh, a call or, or, or having a coffee session in one of the Zoom meetings that you set up. So that way you have a place, just like we would have a place in the teacher's lounge where we, we, we have camaraderie and so forth. Uh, one of the things that sometimes I've done is contact social workers because 
uh, our students in our, are in a situation where they need that support. And of course, students are at the at, at the focal point of of our teaching. And finally, appreciate all, appreciate each other, appreciate the differences, appreciate the language, the cultures, the diversity of who we are as human beings. We all bleed red, as far as I know, and we're not an Indian problem. I'm, 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 I feel like I'm pretty well educated, and I'm sharing my knowledge with you, and I'm so open to learning from you as well as leaders in APS, but let's spend more time appreciating all and, and the accomplishments that we make through this time of struggling. And um, I pray every day to the creator that there will be a solution to the lack of ethics in our government, in our leadership. So let's take it upon as leaders. It doesn't matter if you're a bus driver, a nurse, a psychologist, whatever your role is, the classrooms of, of, of elementary, maybe it's preschool, middle school, high school, and whether it's the academies, it's charter schools, we're all in this together. We're not exempt. And so as a Native American educator, I, I, I just thank you for allowing me to share some of this information with you. I'm gonna do a little bit of supporting our indigenous Native American students. One of the ways that I, I really connect when I'm teaching on site in the classrooms, whether it's Cibola del Norte, uh, CEC, and right now I'm, I'm providing services to a lot of the middle school students because if we were in the classrooms, I would not have been able to do that. So I feel that's a plus that I can draw in 14 middle school students. Uh, we greet each other. Right now we're virtually doing that. But normally, I'm a person that will come and shake your hand. Hi, how are you? My name is, and introduce myself. So acknowledging each other, really recognizing and valuing, again, the, the, the people that we are in New Mexico and others. Some of our teachers may have moved from out of New Mexico, experiencing the land of enchantment and, and knowing that we're a very diverse, whether we're on the north side south side of Albuquerque, east or west of the Rio Grande, that we do bring our cultures, our languages into the classrooms and the interactions that we have daily with our students. So I feel this is key for me in reconnecting. Uh, maybe some of you saw that black teacher, um, uh, I believe he's out east and he was on YouTube a lot, just doing these handshakes, whether it was 25 to 30, students he had a unique way to reconnect to them and that was the way that he would do that every morning every single day to just say hey i value you as a student you're unique because all of us are absolutely unique human beings and this is what i would expect as a principal if i'm doing principal work out in whether it's pueblo of zuni here uh, to expect my non-native teachers, because if I learned how to say, good morning, how are you, in English, I would expect reciprocity and asking me, how do you say greetings, our general greetings at any time of the day is Kesh, she, Kesh, she, Kesh, she, Bernard, Kesh, so there's a response to that, but these are just brief introductions for the Navajo, I believe, uh, my director, Dr. Thompson, joined us. Yeah, eh, it's what I would um, address Dr. Thompson with. Uh, for the Keras, that's, uh, I'm not going to mention all the Pueblos that go with that dialect. That's another presentation. <laughs> they uh, say, Kuwate, Tawae, Huwai, Southern Tiwa, and then there's a Northern Tiwa. There's other dialects that, that I'm learning because some of my students are um, representing maybe. Zuni and Navajo, Shiwi, Tapachu, and that's okay. Uh, we, we become blended and we become a stronger nation within our nation of United States of America. And to continue as a regular teacher or a counselor, as a principal, do you have resources that talk about the history from our perspective? Because sometimes 
when I was reviewing uh, elementary to mid school social studies books, I was uh, where where are the Native American perspectives? Where's our school of thought? We've been left out again. So we have to be careful what materials that we we uh, teach every day. If you have problems in not finding out resources, I'm ready to help you out. We also have resource teachers within our Indian education department. We have our instructional manager, Dr. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm putting a doctor in his front of his name, Mr. Phil Farson. You can call him, uh, email him. We also have Dr. Daisy Thompson, who's a director over all the Indian education department. Um, yeah, con uh, reach out to us. We have information we'll share with you because we're all unique. We don't speak the same language and we don't say how in the morning. I'll say, uh, if you say how to me, I'll say when. If you say when, I'll say where, da, da, da. that's a joke. Uh, <laughs> do continue to share with your students where the food banks are located. Maybe parents are looking for jobs. Maybe they lost their housing. How can we teach our students if they don't have apartments and homes to, to, to continue their education? And absolutely provide internet links to educational information. There's so much out there and use this platform to, to reach out to them electronically. If we were in, in live interactions daily, post some welcoming signs in the students' languages, whether it's keshi, yat eh, in the offices, down the hallway. I was fortunate to have been at Emerson before all this COVID stuff happened. I was at El Emerson Elementary School right near Louisiana and Zuni. And the first day I walked in to start teaching my language was, I was impressed as I looked in the hallway. I had to thank Dr. Medina, the principal at Emerson Elementary School. And maybe before that, the principals had actually put in on the wall, and I'm not sure who painted all those beautiful signs with all the different languages that the students represented in that in that community within our APS schools. And, and so this is just a, a, a proactive suggestions, uh, purposefully infusing culturally relevant reading materials in the lessons. Uh, again, there's there's a bank of knowledge, there's the uh, Albuquerque Indian Pueblo Cultural Center that, that there's a gentleman actually he's from Zuni and Laguna. Uh, Mr. John Jahate is an excellent research person to talk about the history of New Mexico, especially the Pueblo and cultures and the communities. And by golly, you can invite me to do your, your speaking if you want me to. I'm more than welcome to. I mean, I, I feel comfortable doing that. I have resources that I can share with you, but you have to be the ones to reach out to us. And uh, yeah, we're here for you as well. When I'm presenting or talking to parents, future educational leaders, hopefully a lot of Native American teachers, I see them as the seeds because in our Native culture, we have many kinds of seeds and the seeds represent the different colors Bishlan Quintahna is the north that's yellow Sunha Quintahna west in blue like my screen Matkaya Quintahna red Dewan Quintahna where the sun rises each morning is white and so I have a seed bank and and every spring I asked the creator to bless these seeds because it's not of my doing. We, we know that there's biology happening on the DNA of the seeds. And so well, this is, I guess the right word is an analogy, an example that that's how I see the children that I'm working with, whether they're in kindergarten, middle school, high school. If I don't spend time empowering them, learning about them and watering them with educational, um, knowledge and giving them opportunities to be the leaders of today when will they be taught it's our moral ethical responsibility to to 
to uh, water those seeds in education, through education, because I know for myself, education has opened doors and it will continue to open doors. But I've got to want to also, along with that, have the passion. I don't think all of you chose to become an educational leader, to become filthy rich. I'm not rich. In fact, I, I, I come from a home that was very poor when I was growing up along the banks of the Zuni River. But now there's, there's no <laughs> river because of environmental changes. But the seeds of our future are in your classrooms. How are you watering them? Are they wilting? Are there weeds growing in your garden of education? And foremost, plant love in their hearts and water them with wisdom and life's lessons. When they are grown, give them space to grow. And I can guarantee you that, that for those of you that have been teaching maybe over 25 years, I am close to that. I, I just celebrated my birthday yesterday on the day of election. Oh, my goodness. And uh, I can guarantee the students will come. They'll see you whether uh, maybe when all this COVID stuff goes away, maybe they see you at Walmart, they're yelling out your name. Hey, Mr. Chimney, remember me? You used to be my second grade teacher. We did this and that and that. And that brings me to this point of just reflect right now and, and, and think about those teachers that you had, whether it was elementary, middle school, high school. And I can guarantee you right now that maybe one or two or maybe even three teachers stand out in your memory. And maybe they're the ones that really empowered you to go into education. Think for a moment, who was that person, whether it's male or female? What did they do special for you that, that you remember them? And they're the only names that pop up in your memory. I have a couple like that. And one was a coach. And this was in cross country when I was running. I always remember that teacher whenever I see him. He's now about 75-ish, and he was in the uh, military. So uh, I salute him for the service that he did. But that's one of my teachers that really just stands out in my memory, uh, yeah. wanting me to go into education. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Oh, so then I was talking to her about the uh, hybrid, and I said, well, Honest, because she was telling me, well, our plan is for elementary is a week on, week off. I was like, um, oh, that's a nightmare. Patricia, but your said, mic is on. I told her, I said, we have enough space here and enough okay. staff that we could be here 100% every day. Maybe Patricia? We Wednesdays to clean or whatever because it's an early day anyways. She goes, Patricia? Oh, I didn't think about that. <laughs> I was like, oops. Thank you. Finally, I just want to thank you for this time spent with you. This is just affirmations as we continue to move into distance learning. Be your best, look your best, and do your best. And sometimes I do get nervous about trying something new, especially in a different technology that, that became part of my PDP because I wanted to do more of technology in reaching out to my students and teaching because I if we were in a classroom, I'd be doing a lot of just um, language immersion. Well, how do we immerse our students electronically? Um, give yourself grace. Thank yourself and thank others. Because some of the stuff that's happening, right, playing out in our schools and in our state and in our country, we have no control over. And one of the things that I have to remind myself I cannot change people. I cannot change their mindsets. If there's anything to change about me, and surely I will work on that to become a better human being, to, to really share the ethic of care, ethic of the profession. For now, we're telling ourselves this is only temporary and that we can achieve together collectively. We can do difficult things. And I don't have it all figured out. I'm still learning as I go. And this morning, I, I completely lost my link to, oh, my goodness, it's almost 8.15. How do I get on to meet my, uh, my uh, attendees? And so uh, I thank the, the, the people that sent me information. And I thought this was uh, kind of catchy. 
I will teach you in a room. I will teach you now on Zoom. I will teach you in a house. I will teach you with my mouth. I will teach you here and there. I will teach you because I care. And I know that all of you have committed your, your hearts, your minds, your bodies, compassion, because we're all in this caring business together called education. And we must continue to display grace and patience among all our um, colleagues. So thank you very much. I'm going to step out of this. Hopefully I didn't lose my meeting here. Elakwa. Ella, Chris, thank you. Gracias. Uh, in Navajo. And so with that, I guess we'll have a little bit of Q&A if that's, if that's the platform, but I appreciate your, your, your focus and, and being here collectively all together. We're all in it together. Bernard, we did ask, um, or someone did ask if you were going to share this presentation, the slide deck. If you simply send in your debit card or credit card number with, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I will load it, upload it into the uh, file for the TLF uh, people. All of you will be able to take a look at that. So let me just fine tune it because I also want to include some uh, uh, scholarly research that I, 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 I know that a lot of you will probably benefit from. I'm not saying that you don't know the research and stuff, but I'm, I'm happy to share it with you. So again, thank you for the time spent together. And do reach out to me if you, if you ever want me to come into your classroom virtually, just let me know, I'll work out my schedule. I'm more than happy to do that. Um, I'm getting ready to um, do some virtual uh, teaching and supporting our students throughout New Mexico. Um, I'm a part of the New Mexico Bilingual Association. Actually, I'm the vice president, and I am also supporting La Cosecha. I'm working with uh, Adrian Sandoval. We're getting ready to do the Student Leadership Institute. In fact, it starts tomorrow all the way to Saturday, and so I'll be presenting uh, during that time as well. Before we close out, may I? I would love to play a flute song for you to bless all of you so that way you go out in peace and you're ready for another challenging day. And so let me let me share this with you. Is my, is my microphone still on? Okay, here we go. This is for all of you. So with that song, I ask the creator to bless you and to give you wisdom and empower you with strength that you need every day to finish out this uh, period that we're in. So again, thank you very much for allowing me to share with you. You're welcome. I, I see those comments. I, I sincerely thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you. So with that, I'm going to step out because I now have to go get ready for my teaching. And up to all of you, have a blessed day till the sun 
both down. Thanks so much, Bernard. We appreciate you so much. Thank you Beautiful very much. Our, our day. Thank you.